Today I'm going to go through all of the new weapons, armor, and tools in the Mistlands update. There is so much to look at and so many incredible new additions, I really can't wait to show you guys. I'm giving away free copies of Valheim to my subscribers, plus I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers and then I'd get one of these which would really mean the world to me, so please do consider subscribing. So today we're going to be taking a look at absolutely everything that you guys see here. This is all of the new weapons, armor, and tools in Mistlands. However, first we're going to talk about the crafting stations that you need in order to make all of those items and the materials that are required. There are chapters in this video, so if you want to skip ahead to the bit where I'm just reviewing the weapons, armor, and tools, then you can do so. But for those of you that are still here, this is the main thing you're going to need. It is, of course, the Black Forge. So under crafting, you can see the recipe for the Black Forge here, and the Black Marble is the way to unlock it. So as soon as you get Black Marble in the game, which you can get in many different ways in the Mistlands biome, then you'll unlock the Black Forge recipe. You can also make this Black Forge cooler. It is the Black Forge improvement, so then you'll be able to upgrade things you make in the Black Forge to level 2. Currently, there is just this one improvement for the Black Forge. So the Black Forge will make up a lot of the Carpus stuff. So all of the Carpus armor, as you can see here, is made in here. Also, things like the bolts, a lot of the weapons, the bows, and the swords, and things like that are all made here as well. And this right here, which is the new Diverga Lantern, that is also made here. So we're going to go through all of this stuff later on, but the Black Forge is going to be the main thing you're going to need for all of the new weapons, armor, and tools. Now, you'll also need one of these things over here, and this is the Galda Table. So again, we can see the recipe here under crafting, and you need all of those things there in order to make it. So you can get the Yggdrasil wood by chopping down trees in Mistlands, the Black Cores can be found in Mistlands dungeons, and the Refined Ita is something you'll need to make this thing for. This is the Ita Refinery and will process sap and soft tissue in order to make the Refined Ita. If you'd like to see a full demonstration on how the Galda table works as well as the Refined Ita and all that whole process, then there's a link in the video description which takes you to a video I made all about magic in Mistlands. The Galda table also has one upgrade improvement and that is the rune table right here, and as you can see, that is the recipe. The Golda table recipe itself will be unlocked when you get black metal in the game. Black metal will also unlock the Ita refinery, which is of course how we get the refined Ita that we need for the Golda table. Now, as for the Golda table itself, if we open that up, basically what this makes is the feather cape, so that's the new cape, and that has the reduced fall damage. Again, we're going to go into all this later, and also all of the magical weapons that you see here. It's also where you make the seal breaker, but that's not a weapon. So now you know how to make all the new stuff, let's go and have a look at what it is and what it can do. We're going to start by looking at the new armor in the game. So this here is not new. This is the current best armor you can get in the game, which is the padded armor. What I've done is upgraded all of this armor fully so that we can see how much the current best level armor in the game is versus what the new best level armor will give us. So let's go ahead and take all this padded armor off and we'll equip it and see what our armor comes out at. So currently in the game, the padded armor will each give you an armor rating of 32 when it is maxed out at level four. And the linen cape will give you an armor of four. So all of that totals up as you can see here, to 100 total armor in the game. As you can see here, the level 4 padded armor with the armor level at 32 is the same as level 1 carpus armor, which is also 32, and that's one of the new armor sets. The other new armor set is the Ita armor, and this is a much lower initial armor rating, but it's more to do with magic, and we're going to go on to that in a second. So this is the Ita armor, and it's not as strong in terms of the armor it gives you versus the padded armor. However, what it does do is has Ita regen bonuses. So with the Ita armor all at level 4, we get 22 armor per item and then we also get a armor of four for the new feather cape when that's at level four and this gives us a total armor of 70 so it isn't as strong as the padded armor however what it does do is gives us improved item regen you can see you get 20 percent for the hood and you get 40 percent each for the trousers and the robe this of course totals 100 percent item regen now item is what you use in order to cast magical spell attacks again i do have a full video on that link in description if you're interested now what we have here is the new carpus armor and all of it is at level 4, meaning we get 38 armor each for all of the Carpus armor, plus we get, of course, the 4 for the new Feather Cape. And this gives us a total of 118, so the new best level armor rating in the game is 118. It's worth mentioning as well, the Feather Cape, as well as the reduced fall damage, is also resistant versus frost. As you can see, the fall damage is minus 100%, so you can literally fall from any height in the game and take zero damage, which is super useful in Mistlands. So here I am in the new Mistlands terrain, and what I'm going to do is equip only my feather falling cape. Okay, so with that one on, we get full damage of negative 100%. So you see, even if I fall off something really high up like here, we won't take any damage. What happens is we just sort of glide like this. You actually fall very, very slowly and you can actually use this to cover a little bit of a distance off of a cliff. And then as you can see there, once you hit the bottom, you take absolutely no damage whatsoever. Of course, this doesn't work just in Mistlands. This will work anywhere. So it's going to be super useful if you're building something very tall or if you're in the mountains biome and of course in the Mistlands biome. Now the Carpus helmet doesn't have any movement speed 
deductions, but the breastplate and the greaves each have minus 5%. So if you're wearing this, you will have a 10% speed reduction. Moving on from the armor, let's take a look at the two new shields we have in the game. These are the Carpus Shield and also the Carpus Buckler. And you may be wondering why I have this in here, the Diverger Lantern, but it's not a mistake. It does actually give you a block force of 20. Now that may not sound like a lot, but remember this is a lantern, not a shield. And if we compare it to this, the Carpus Shield, which has a block force of 60, the fact that it has a third of that block force is kind of interesting. Also, the Carpus Shield has a parry bonus of 1.5 and the Diverger Lantern has a two times parry bonus. It's also quite a useful item because if we take it out and equip it, you'll see that what we can do here is actually hold it as we're walking along. So you could hold this as well as a sword and be running through like a dungeon somewhere and all of a sudden something comes out of nowhere to hit you and you can right click to block with it. So that way you're actually getting light in the dungeon and some sort of blocking power. Obviously it's not as good as a shield, but worth a mention nonetheless. So I spawned a dragger in here to show you this thing in action. Let's let him come up to us and let's block him. And as you can see there, we block the damage and we're able to stagger him. And once again, there we go. So we block a lot of the damage and we're still parrying him. So this could ha definitely have its uses in the game. So looking at the new shields and comparing them to what we already have, the current best tower shield is of course the black metal tower shield with a block force of 150 and a block armor of 104. If we compare that, we can see that the Carpa shield has a block force of 60 and a block armor of 96. As such, it is not as strong in the game as the black metal tower shield. That being said, it's not quite comparing like for like because the Carpa shield does have a parry bonus of 1.5%, whereas the black metal tower shield cannot parry at all. Also, the black metal tower will restrict your movement by 20%, whereas the Carpa shield is only negative 5%. Going on to the Carpa's buckler, we can see the block armor for that is 78 with a block force of 50 and parry at 2.5. If we compare that to the black metal shield, we can see that the parry bonus is 1.5, block force 50 and block armor of 78. So basically it's the same stats, but the Carpus Buckler does have 2.5 versus 1.5 of the parry bonus, which means that of the two of these, the Carpus Buckler would now be the best one to use in the game. Moving on to swords now, and what we have here are a couple different ones, the Crom, which is two-handed, and also the Mist Walker. So this is the current best sword in the game, the Black Metal Sword, the slash there of 95. And I'm just going to focus on that as the main stat and compare it. So 95 slash for the Black Metal Sword, we compare that to the Crom, the slash there is 150. So that is an absolutely huge difference. Okay, it is two-handed, but still, that is a massive bonus. And the Mist Walker is only a 75, but it also does a frost damage of 40. So that has its uses for sure. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate every weapon because some of them are kind of obvious, but the Crom, I feel, definitely warrants a little demonstration. So let's spawn something in. So I spawned in a dragon here to test this against. Let's give him a hit and see what happens. Oh my goodness. Wow. It actually one-shot him. <laughs> okay, I really was not expecting that, guys. This is super powerful. The fact you can one-shot Drago with it is just amazing. So let's take a look at this thing in action by doing the three hits that we do with the forehand and then the backhand and then the third hit isn't over the top. So that's a pretty cool action for the new sword. On top of that, we do have a special with the middle mouse button, which is kind of like a jab, but obviously a very powerful lunge there and would do great damage. So I really think this sword is going to be a firm favorite for many of us because it is just so powerful. I now have the Mist Walker sword attached, so let's see how that one does in comparison. And it looks like it's going to be a two hit against the dragon, which isn't too bad. Now this one looks super cool and one benefit it does have is the frost attack that it does. So that will obviously slow your enemies down and definitely will have its uses. On top of that, of course, this is just one handed. So unlike the Crom, you'd be able to equip a shield with this and use that if you wanted. Okay, next we have a new hammer and it has the best name ever for a hammer. It's called the Demolisher. <laughs> so the main stats for this really are the blunt at 145 and the knockback at 210. If we compare that to the current best hammer in the game, the Iron Sledge, you'll see it has a blunt of 55 and a knockback of 200. So this has a slightly higher knockback, but the blunt is a massive difference. 145 versus currently 55. That is huge. So I'm going to get this hammer out and let's go ahead and spawn a few Draga in and see how we do. So I spawned a few different Draga in here and let's see how this hammer does against them. Oh my god. Oh wow, it took the one hit. Oh wow, that's so good. Well guys, we have our new favorite friend to take to dungeons or anywhere where there's going to be a lot of enemies all in one go. Look at that. One hit took out five Draga. That is absolutely incredible. And of course, we're going to have to try this against five feelings as well to see how it does against them. So one hit and oh my goodness, that cleared them out. So yeah, I wasn't expecting it to one hit kill them, but the fact that it's clearing them that far away and it only took a couple of hits is pretty awesome. And at the same time, I'm realizing I'm about to destroy all of this lovely stonework that I've built here. <laughs> so the demolisher is certainly going to be very helpful, especially in dungeons. Moving on to spears now, and we have this new spear right here, which is the Carpus spear. So this one has a pierce of 115. And if we compare that to the fang spear at 75, you can see there is a huge difference. So a fantastically powerful new spear in the game. And if spears are your thing, you're going to love this one. Now we 
have some things that are a little bit different. So let's just open this chest and I'll show you what each of them is. We have this skull and a hattie. Now this is two-handed and it's like two weapons. I'm going to show you that in action in a second. So it's kind of like the flesh rippers, but like a new version of them. You can see the flesh rippers have a slash of 60, whereas the skull and hattie has a slash of only 45, but also a pierce of 45. So definitely going to have its uses. We also have bile bombs, kind of like a new version of the ooze bombs. And they basically have the exact same stats as the ooze bombs have. And then we have this thing right here, which is the him and Apple, one of the coolest new weapons in the game. Now it's basically a bit like one of the at guys, and that's why I've got the black metal at guy right here. And we can see this one has a pierce of 105, whereas the himlin has a pierce of only 85. Now it is of course two handed, so we have to bear that in mind, but look guys at what it can do. <laughs> that's so good. So that was its special attack on a dragon. Let's let this dragon see that we're here and start hitting him and see what we can do with this thing. So we can hit him from quite a distance and electrify him all at the same time. You might have seen there, but that actually stunned him as well. So that's actually pretty awesome. So I've now equipped the skull and Hattie and it has three attacks, which are this one, this one, and this one. So basically a right hand, left hand, and then both hands. I'm sure it'd have its uses in the game, but that's how that one works. I've equipped an ooze bomb here. So that's what we currently have in the game. You see when I throw it, that's what happens. Now let's go ahead and equip a bile bomb, which is the new one and throw that and see what the difference is. And there we go. So just a bit of a different animation. Oh, it also does a lot more damage. Look at that. Much more damage happening there. So these are basically AOE attacks and the bile bomb does seem to be quite a bit stronger actually than the ooze bomb. Now next up we have the bows and there's an incredible inclusion in the game now because we have this thing right here. This is the arbalest which is actually a crossbow and on top of that we have this right here which is the spine snap bow. So the current best bow in the game really is the drag of fang which has a pierce there of 47. On top of that it does do a poison damage of 5. Now if we compare that to the spine snap the pierce there is 72. So that's a huge difference and it also does a spirit of 5. Now the stamina for it when drawing is 14 per second versus the drag of fang which is only 10 per second so it is more stamina required other than that though this spine snap is better in just about all ways compared to the drag of fang then if we look at the arbalist you'll see that there, that has a pierce of 200 which is absolutely huge i mean if you compare that to the drag of fang it's basically over four times stronger than that in terms of the pierce damage in saying that it is slow and it is a two-handed weapon so obviously it's got its like drawbacks as well but let's go ahead and see it in action now in order to fire the arbalist you need to make up some of these things right here which are bolts the best of those is the carpus bolt with a pierce of 72 but you can also make bone bolts and black metal bolts and also iron bolts so when you go ahead and equip the arbalist it'll actually load automatically for you and you can see there just how long that takes so i've spawned it in a fueling here let's wait until he sees us so we're not getting a sneak shot and see the damage that it'll do okay here he comes and boom one shot there took about half of his health and also knocked him back a bit now another thing with the arbalist you'll see there's not much of a drop off versus the bows it fires a lot straighter with the arrows not dropping off anywhere near as much. Now, if you load up the crossbow, but then you're running around with a sword and you quickly switch to the crossbow, you'll see you still have to load the bullet into it. So you don't walk around with it loaded as such if you're using a different weapon, but you could just be walking around with this. And then if you see something, you can quickly shoot at it as soon as you see it. Now, on top of that, we also have new arrows for the spine snap bow. And that right here is the carpus arrows with a pierce of 72. And if we compare that to the current best in the game, the needle arrows at 62, they are a fair bit stronger. Now, I do keep mentioning my magic video, but it is linked in the description if you want a full tutorial on the magic weapons. But let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got the Staff of Frost and also the Staff of Embers, and these are the two new elemental magic weapons. Then we have the Staff of Protection and also the Dead Razor, which are the two new blood magic weapons. Now you will need to eat foods that have an item value on them. So they are the Stuffed Mushroom, the Yggdrasil Porridge, and also the Mage Cap. You'll need to eat these to get the item because magic requires item in order to work. But once you have that, we've got the Staff of Frost equipped right now, and you can see it'll basically shoot at enemies and constantly shoot a barrage of frost at them. And this does a frost damage of 30, as you can see right there. We now equip the Staff of Embers. This does a blunt of 120 and a fire of 120. So it's pretty powerful and it just shoots off little fireballs like this, which you can keep shooting at your enemies. So now let's look at the blood magic items. And the first one I've equipped here is the Dead Razor, which if I scroll in a bit right here, you'll see it look like something out of Hamlet. You basically hold this glowing pink skull and that is the Dead Razor, but it does do something super, super cool. So do bear in mind that it's called Blood Magic because it uses blood to cast, meaning it will take away some of your health, which you're about to see. So if I go ahead and cast this, then my health went from 88 down to 53. But check this out. There's a skeleton raising from the dead. And there he is. And they get different names all the time. You can pet them and they love you. And you can also rename them if you want to. But here's what they do. Let's go ahead and spawn in another dragger and we'll see this guy in action. So basically, this guy here, Ake, is going to fight for us. Go on, Ake. Look at that. He's taking him down. Kill him. You got this. So it looks like the third shot's going to be the winner. Go on. Yeah. 
Yeah, there we go. And of course, they take damage, but as you can see, they will fight for you. Now, the other blood magic item is the Staff of Protection. So again, this will use some of your HP. Remember that? But let's go ahead and cast it and see what happens. And there we go, guys. Now, I accidentally cast it twice, which is why my health went down quite so much. But yeah, so basically what it does is puts a magic barrier around you. Now, in the top right, you'll see this magic barrier does have a countdown. So when that countdown runs out, it will, of course, disappear. However, as you can see here, it will protect you against enemy attacks for a short period of time. After a while, though, the enemies will be able to smash through this bubble as it does have hit points. So basically, there we go. I think it was the fourth hit from that dragger broke through that bubble and now we're no longer protected. And if you're wondering if this works against bosses, the answer is that yes, it will. But obviously, they do a lot of damage and are likely to break through the shield on the first try. So it will probably only protect you against one boss attack. However, this staff also has a really other feature that is super, super cool. So let me show you that right now. Now, you'll see here the staff of protection. If we go ahead and use it nearby to tamed animals, actually puts a little shield around all of your tamed animals as well. Looks like I missed the hen there, so I've gone ahead and done that as well. But basically, all tamed animals will be put in a little bubble when you use the staff of protection nearby. On top of that, if you've already raised a skeleton from the dead, and then you go ahead and use the staff of protection nearby that, you'll see that that too will get a little bubble protecting it. So it's a really nice feature with the staff of protection. It protects you, it will protect your Viking friends if they're nearby on a server, and it also protects your tamed pets. How good is that feature, guys? Seriously, the fact you can do that to all your tamed animals and things is just amazing. Now, we also have some new tools in the game. So we have now a black metal pickaxe that has been added, as well as the Jotun Bane. So the black metal pickaxe, you can see here, has a durability there maxed out at 210, and it has a pierce of 49. If we compare that to the iron pickaxe, it has only 150 durability with a pierce of 33. So we do now have a much stronger pickaxe in the game, and I, for one, am very, very happy about this. Now, the Jotun Bane is basically an axe, and you can see there it does a slash of 80, but it does also have a poison of 40. So what you could use this for chopping trees, it would also make a great weapon to use against enemies, making it very versatile to take with you when adventuring. If we compare it to the current best axe in the game, the Black Metal Axe, you see there that has a slash of 100, which is of course higher, but it doesn't have the poison damage. And the durability of these two are exactly the same at 175. So an axe that will certainly have its uses. Now, I'll save some of the coolest things till the end, guys. We have now traps and ballistas. So looking at the recipes in the miscellaneous section, you'll see the trap there just requires black metal, bronze nails, and a mechanical spring. And the ballista right here also needs black metal and three mechanical springs. As for the ballista, it will also require missiles to be made. So you can make black metal missiles or you can make wooden missiles. The wooden missiles have a pierce of 75, whereas the black metal have a pierce of 120 and a knockback of 60. So let's go ahead and see these things in action. So starting with the trap, you place it on the ground and then you have to press E to arm the trap. Now I've spawned in a troll here to try and show you guys if I can get it to walk towards me and it walks into that trap. You'll see that it does quite a bit of damage to it and also staggers it. As you can see, once the trap has attacked once, it does then need to be reset before it would work again. So these could be fun things to have placed around your base for defense, but be careful because if you walk into it, it will hurt you quite a lot. And you'll see there after a couple uses, it will break and require replacing. Now the ballista is a super fun item. So let's go ahead and place that down. So I've spawned in a Grey Dwarf here, which is trying to attack me. And you'll see here the ballista will go ahead and shoot that Grey Dwarf when it runs past it. Okay, it shot at me. So you do need to be careful, guys. These things, they will actually shoot at you. So you have to be careful like to get it locked onto the animal and not locked onto you. So again, you could have these facing out at your base and then load them up as a bit of extra defense. Personally, I'm not sure about the idea of them shooting at us. I think that's a little bit odd, uh, but I do like them in the game in general. We'd love to know your thoughts on this one, guys. What do you think about the fact that it shoots at you and not just at mobs? Let me know down in the comments. So the dad jokes are, of course, coming, but I hope you enjoyed today's video about all of the new weapons, armor, and tools in Mistlands. If you did, please do consider liking and subscribing, helping me get to that 100,000 subscribers. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Why don't pirates take a bath before they walk the plank? They just wash up on shore. Why do you never see elephants hiding in trees? Because they're so good at it. Did you hear about the racing snail who got rid of his shell? He thought it would make him faster, but it just made him sluggish. What's the best way to watch a fishing tournament? Livestream.